I think what I'll do is I'll drag it across like this. But I'll only work on the middle. And I want to be careful here that I don't take too much. Although it would be very difficult to take too much doing it this way. This is called draw filing, by the way. Where you hold the file sideways. All of you knife maker or wannabe knife maker guys will know that already. But some people will look at that and say, how is that working? Well, the cuts in the file are going across diagonally, so it does work. And it, and it works really good for flattening things. So that's why I'm doing it here. I was just getting ready to edit a video. I was out in the shop and um, I took apart the tilt and lift mechanism to do some fine tuning on it things that I didn't really get a chance to do while I was building it. Uh, the thing about building something like that is, well, it's complex, and then you've got um, filming it on top of it and trying to stay on top of that. So you have to try to, I don't know, if you say skip little steps, but the finer you know things that you would normally do while you're doing a project like that, like making sure that everything is perfect uh, you can't get to when you're doing that. So, first thing I want to say is how why I designed the lift the way that I did that vertical lift when it could have been it could have been easier to make it swing. And I looked at both ways when I originally started designing this, and the swing up uh, method has its advantages. It's slightly simpler. However, it's not like it's deceptive. It looks deceptively simple. That's the problem with it. And then there's the other issue with how you're going to raise it up. The typical, like the a production table saw has a um, geared, um, it's a gear actually, part of it. And then that's driven by a worm drive that makes the... Um, thing move up and down and so the blade moves up and down in an arc as it swings up and I was thinking that it would be neat if the blade went straight up and down and that way I could mark the center location right on the saw and right on the fence because there's often it's not often but it's occasionally that that's important that you need to know exactly where the center of that blade is and uh, that would be helpful and I, I really didn't see it being any more complex. Now that I have the thing together, I can see that it's it seemed it probably seems like it is, especially when you look at all the pieces of steel that I used in there. But the mechanism as it is with that vertical lift is uh like it's more for long term durability and reliability. I'm not gonna have to do anything with that as far as like real maintenance. They're like there's so much surface area for these parts to contact and keep them in line, it's very difficult for wear to set in. Whereas if you've got a single swing up pivot point, then you know that's all that uh, action is concentrated in that one area, so that can start to wear uh, fairly quickly. Another thing about that vertical lift design and why I went with that is because, okay, originally thinking of plans and whenever I build plans for something, I want to make things as simple as possible and kind of foolproof as possible. And the way this is designed, it allows for a lot of things that you can adjust so that you can, with extra effort on your part, make up for problems that you might have with uh, lining things up like the whole motion is locked to those two slots that I cut for the back steel uh, uh, flat bars that go in which are the main bearings and everything pushes up against that the other thing is that uh, all the cuts are nice and straight you don't have to cut any curves or anything like that and that would pro I could probably uh, design a swivel or swing up type mechanism that would do that but I think it would be a lot more difficult the other thing about the swing up mechanism is that okay 
it's uh, locked on the pivot point, you have to really make that really beefy with wood if you want to keep it from moving side to side. Like if you take something that's swinging up like this, you don't want the end that's free to move back and forth. And it would be difficult to add something for the keep that, I guess it wouldn't be too difficult, but these are where the complications come in. And when someone looks at this and say, well, I would have made it swing up, but they don't look at that thing where you would have to try to stabilize that movement there. You could either make this massively beefy over here where it pivots, which would add a lot of bulk and probably really make it more complex than this thing is. Or you could add something at the front, which would almost definitely make it more complex than this. So, But overall, I think this is the best way to go. Because like I said, it gives you the most options for corrective measures in case you get something wrong. Or future adjustments in case something wears. Or out and out replacement of the parts if something does wear out. Which I really seriously doubt. Because steel on steel at a low speed like that is very low friction. If you look at the typical cast iron table saw, the contact for the trunnion is uh, cast iron on cast iron. There's no bearing surfaces there. That's all like basically the same as this, steel on steel. Something else that I was thinking about when I designed the vertical lift was that maybe I would make it so that it's motorized, like you would like motor control, a stepper motor to raise and lower that part. And I would strip out all of the mechanical parts like that inclined plane and all that. I'd leave the inclined planes in there, of course, but I'd take out the lift bar and all that. And I would just raise and lower that uh, vertical part with a stepper motor. And that is something that I'm thinking about more and more and more. The only issue that I have with that approach is that I would have to do a whole bunch of research on that. Uh, I have the gear. I have my old Shape Oco down there that's not actually being used. And if I was going to get into CNC uh, again, I think I'd just build one from scratch that I knew was nice and solid and rigid or probably make it with steel parts and stuff like that. So I would have, be able to sacrifice two of the stepper motors from that and the Arduino and the motor controller. It's just I would have to spend a lot of time learning about that stuff so that I could correctly implement it into this. But the idea is that you would have one stepper motor that would raise and lower that vertical section and that's where the benefit would come in. It'd be just a straight up and down action on a on a on a lead screw type thing. So you could precisely raise it up and precisely raise it down. It's already locked in position. It like that's the other thing like the other benefit of that is that once you have it wheeled into the like depth of cut that you have, you don't have to lock it because it's not moving inside all of that, um, those steel guides. They hold it precisely in position and it can't move. One motor for the lift and one motor for the tilt as well. And I don't know what the front panel of this thing would look like, probably a couple of buttons for each or maybe more than one because I can kind of see it where it would have to have some sort of uh, um, like one set of buttons for rapid movement and then another set of buttons for like steps almost like it would tilt the thing one degree at a time to fine tune. So you get it close with the, the rapid thing and then you dial it in with the other one that will just do little one degree increments. And the same thing for the up and down, you would rapidly lift it up to where it needs to be. And this is where you, this is the way you would use it for most op applications. It's only when you need a specific depth of cut that you would use these fine tuning buttons that would, you know, lift it up maybe, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch or whatever, a thirty seconds of an inch or whatever. So that's the idea that I'm leaning towards now. Another question I got was about the arbor, where I got it, whether I took it out of my old saw. My old saw was a right tilt, and this saw, new saw, is going to be a left tilt. Overall, I would prefer 
to have a right tilt, but um, like when I started building, designing this, the idea was to make plans, of course, and the, the more popular option for saws overall is a left tilt, so I, I, I took it that route. So I selected, I found a um, replacement arbor for a fairly common saw, and I ordered that from Busy Bee. There are several saws that use that arbor, and um, I don't know, I don't have the numbers on me right here, but I, I went through all of this on my website forum, the, the posts that I well, posted about building this saw, about designing this saw, uh, nearly four years ago, I posted that and started talking about it and started planning it out. So the information there is on the Arbor. Um, the Arbor that I'm using is from the Craft Tech saw, 146 CT 146 there is a rigid a manufactured table saw that's um, based on the same design it's probably made in the same factory by the same people it's just rebranded rigid and there's um, I, I think there was a grizzly model that's the same so but the only problem is that the saw is older so it might be difficult to get it. I did get mine from Busy Bee. I ordered it and they were able to get it. And my understanding from them is that it will, they won't obsolete the part, but it will take time to get it if they don't have any in stock. You'll have to order it and then they'll have the part made basically. And you'll have to wait for that type thing. And, uh, what I did was I ordered uh, the first one and then I contacted them again, asked them how many they had on hand and the, she said they had eight on hand. So I ordered those two. So I have those if anybody's really, truly interested in building this saw as I'm building it, you can get that arbor from me. Like I said, I've got eight and I'm not planning on ordering any more through me because it's kind of a hassle to try to do that and then mail it out to people. But I was thinking that would give people that are, are truly serious about the design, you know, the opportunity to build it based on that arbor. <clears throat> so that's the arbor. And I also had people ask what size blade it is, 10 inch blade. I talked about this actually in this video that I'm starting to edit here. And I go into that a little bit more detail. Basically I chose a 10 inch blade because I only need that I like I, I very rarely use the full capacity of a 10 inch blade so I didn't see the point in having a 12 inch blade when you know it would complicate the design it would make everything bigger also uh, 12 inch blades have a, a larger hole a one inch hole so you'd either need a one inch arbor or you would need a bushing to bring the one inch blade down to five eighths. I think I had a comment about lubrication for the steel. Uh, I use Vaseline on the, the lift thing. I didn't put any lubrication on the vertical guides at all. Uh, when I put it back together yesterday, I dripped a little bit of oil in there, uh, thin oil, because that really shouldn't need any actual lubrication. And the thing about lubrication is that if you put it in there, like if you put Vaseline in there, it's just going to collect a lot of sawdust and it's going to gunk up and it's going to build up around the top where it comes up and down. So it's probably not going to do a whole lot of good there anyway. So I avoided it. Uh, someone asked me about wax, if you can wax them. And I don't, I don't know that wax will make much of a difference. But it certainly wouldn't hurt. And then sawdust won't stick to the wax. So that's so that's a good thing. And and then you get the wax. The wax would actually um, give the steel a bit of a, a moisture barrier so it wouldn't it wouldn't rust. 
So as far as functionality goes, the lift and tilt is done. Like after the tune up yesterday, everything's running smoothly. And uh, the next part logically would be to build the cabinet of the saw so that I can build the frame that holds that uh, lift and tilt in place. And I'm thinking that's gonna be the next video. The only problem with building the cabinet though is that it's gonna take up a valuable space in my shop until this thing is done. And I'm gonna, probably gonna run into the same issue that I had with the jointer, which was that as I was building the jointer, it was taking up so much space in my shop that I really couldn't do anything else and I wanted to get that done and get it out of the way. So in a way it's good because then I'll finish the thing quickly, but in a way it's bad because maybe I'll rush it and I won't do it the way I want to do it. So I don't know. It'd be nice if I had a little bit more space or at least if I had space to put that while it's being worked on, but I don't, so. I don't need 12 inches. <laughs> it's true, I don't need 12 inches. 10 inches is just fine. I, you know. <laughs> uh, I've had no complaints about that. <laughs>